Uh, I wanted to um, uh, speak briefly uh, tonight about um, changing the metrics of uh, 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 corporate reporting. We've talked this evening about changing the narrative, and if you're going to change the narrative, then it probably will be helpful to have some new language uh, to tell a new story. Um, like all the other speakers, uh, I submitted a, a brief essay uh, for the uh, Human Capital Handbook that was recently published. Um, I used in my essay uh, a study done in 2008 uh, by two Boston University professors uh, who wanted to know what do investors want. Uh, so five years ago they found that uh, investors were very receptive to receiving uh, new information, uh, more detailed information on uh, issues such as governance, uh, social responsibility uh, and environmental responsibility, uh, but the um, and and they also found that that corporations would be prepared uh, to to come forward with this, but uh, they they found three problems: um, succinctly, uh, comparability, credibility, and availability. Um, how, how is uh, uh, one company's definition of responsibility uh, measure up against another, uh, another company's definition? So there has to be a, a set of standards uh, that, that people agree on. Uh, second of all, there is the issue of, of, of credibility. Um, are the, it, we, in order for there to be um, uh, sort of credibility, you have to believe that everyone is reporting on the same basis. And finally, the idea of availability. Do investors have enough time uh, to, to review and absorb what, what will amount to a mountain of new information? Um, as I said, that study was done in 2008. Five years later, there, there's been, a, a, as most of you are probably well aware, a great deal of progress in this area. Um, uh, at the time they wrote uh, their study, they, they made uh, reference to the, um, the beginnings of good works uh, by GRI. Uh, GRI has just published its, its, fourth, um, its, its fourth level of reporting. Uh, as we speak uh, today, uh, there are 1,500 people gathered um, in, in Amsterdam. Um, under the umbrella of the um, International Integrated Reporting Committee uh, discussing these issues. So in the keeping with the tone of, of many of the speakers, uh, there, is, there is reason for optimism that, um, that this, the, the new metrics um, uh, the new metrics are, are developing. Um, uh, the, um, the, the ACCA uh, did a survey and recently and found that 90% um, uh, of the respondents, corporate respondents, were, were interested in, in, um, in providing this information. So there, is, um, there, is, uh, there seems to be broad agreement that, that more needs to be uh, put forth. Um, and, and so the question is, is how are we going to, um, how are we going to bring this about? Um, you, you, you always have a much more uh, interesting gathering if you create a little controversy, so I'm, I'm going to do some argument here. I, I would, uh, Ar Raj and I, uh, we, we have found that we, we love to argue. So I would, I would take issue with, with his point um, on, on the regulation um, is, is, is an answer uh, because um, uh, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm at one with, uh, with uh, John Kay on this, who I, I believe agrees with me that regulation, imposing more regulation is not the answer. Um, I think we've all seen, uh, we've all seen too much um, uh, regulations as, as a target for skirting, that, there are, that the, the lawyers are always smarter than the regulators. And, and that they can get get around them, um, and and that uh, so so what we 
we, we, we need uh, less of a spirit of compliance um, and, and more a um, and more spirit of, 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 of strategy. Um, I, I think that um, I think that uh, and just to just to address the, an issue that, that Michael brought up in terms of of uh, sort of measuring um, and, and how are we measuring and what's going on in the balance sheet. I, when I started writing this essay, I, I came across a quote from Diane Coyle um, in her new book, uh, The Economics of Enough. She asks, how can we measure the economy appropriately and make sure measurement tallies with value in an increasingly intangible uh, economy? So when, as Michael says, uh, uh, there are no longer um, uh, machines and, um, and uh, uh, mills and printing presses on balance sheets, but, but simply uh, the value is created by, um, by the workers, how do we measure that? So, so I, I think that, that the, um, the, the professional associations, various ad hoc committees are, are sort of moving in this direction. Um, but it, it, um, it, it's going to require uh, sort of an old-fashioned movement um, and sort of how are, uh, I'm, uh, I am of the age of, of coming out of, um, of uh, anti-war movements and civil rights movements in the 1960s and I remember how all of those happened and it's, it's, it's people uh, sort of coming together um, with uh, a certain amount of outrage at the way things are and determined to change it. And I think in, in many cases um, it's going to require uh, more and more impetus from, um, from the purveyors in, of information. Uh, that used to be called uh, journalists. Uh, today they, they go under a, 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 a lot of different names. Uh, because, as, as, as was noted, uh, the, the traditional form of journalism is, is, um, is changing, if not dying. And, but I think what we're seeing uh, with, with information exchanges on the internet from bloggers and so on, that a movement can be created. And this movement has got to uh, affect uh, the ultimate owners of securities. Um, the stockholders, the pensioners whose, whose pension plans uh, are being managed. Um, I'm certainly uh, very much in favor of the idea that, that Raj talked about of, of dis disintermediation, getting as, as many of the intermediaries out of it, there being more uh, shareholder democracy. Um, I think a very, very positive sign recently, uh, certainly in the U.S., um, the, the New York Times, uh, old journalism, uh, featured a very large article on, um, on BlackRock and what the activities of BlackRock uh, in the areas, areas of, of governance. Uh, BlackRock, uh, certainly one of the largest money managers in the world, uh, taking a much more aggressive stance in the affairs of corporations uh, particularly in, in the areas of boards and board compensation and, and uh, board responsibility. So um, I, I, uh, I, I, I close um, uh, with, a, with, a, with a sense of, of, of hopefulness uh, that, that we can create a movement to, um, uh, to make uh, companies more responsive um, uh, to um, to, to reporting and, 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 and information that uh, the companies need. Um, Raj made um, a comment about, uh, I don't know how recent it was, when SHRM, SHRM is, SHRM is the US equivalent of the CIPD. It's the HR Professionals Association. I think that's what it stands for, as a matter of fact. Um, and they wanted to introduce uh, more metrics, and they were stamped on, you'll know this, mm -hmm. by the HRPA, which was the um, HR Policy Association, which is actually a Washington lobbying group and doesn't seem to be full of pleasant people. Um, 
uh, and their point was that they weren't going to do anything about HR metrics and they didn't want anybody else to do anything about HR metrics until the financial people asked for them. Um, you, 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 must, you will be aware of that. Um, something similar happened, but the other way around in the UK, which was that the CIPD commissioned a report through Henley uh, Management College, through uh, Zelda King, uh, to look at that very issue. I think it was support. I think it was sponsored by Hendersons, the financial people, and they came out. Or oh, one of the outcomes was that. The HR people themselves said, yes, we have loads and loads of data, good HR metric data, but we're not going to give them to the finance director until he asks for them. Thank you very much. We own this data. And of course, the poor finance director hadn't a clue what questions to ask. So there's a kind of institutionalized disconnect between uh, and there's other research that we've carried out ourselves to seem to show that that's there. Um, in a sense, the only, well, there were two questions I'd want to, in a sense, the um, HR metrics have not traditionally included a measure of the management of human capital. Um, I, I have a personal view that it is impossible to actually measure the absolute value of human capital. A lot of people waste a lot of time trying to do that. But the one thing you can measure is the quality, and the, you can rank order the quality of the sophistication or the maturity of the way that human capital is managed. And all I'm really asking here is that that is very often not included in the traditional HR metrics, which are about ROI and time to recruit and all that. Um, the other question was a different one. I was just thinking that you've been, what, 30 years in Wall Street. Isn't it time to write your autobiography? No, it's, it's, it's like, it, it'll never see the light of day. You, I mean, you could call it fiction. Well, it, it, it's stranger than fiction. <laughs> stranger than fiction. It's stranger than fiction. Okay, um, a film script, maybe? Yeah, but I, I'm not no? sure. All right. <coughs> Thanks, Stephen. Uh, just, I mean, just to address yourself, the, you know, the, so the, the HR committee says, no, we're not going to do it until they ask for it. So that's, I go back to my call for some kind of a movement uh, of, of that. Um, I think they were alluded to earlier, uh, fund ma uh, pension managers like CalPERS, uh, the public pension funds, um, their members, if they become aware that in fact they do have a great deal of power. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it, 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 I mean, CalPERS has been um, very progressive on these issues and, and so long as they sort of stay out of scandals, they, they are, they are um, they're highly regarded, and they've been a leader in this field. And if more people, uh, public public pension funds, university endowments, uh, I, I think the university endowments can can be much more activist invest, uh, investors, um, and and stop following the lead of their of their advisors, and and you know take direct action that that there there is there is hope. They could even own companies, couldn't they themselves? Uh, they could, they could, they could. Uh, the the uh, in in Canada that is that is the, the Ontario the Ontario Teachers um, a pension fund, very very large pension fund, owns uh, operates its own private equity company, and they so are they're, a, they're they're very active uh, very active investors. So that that's a, that's a breakthrough point where we can be more than what was it, Raj? Um, hopeful, we can actually be optimistic. Seems a good note to end on. Thanks.